Now, as we mentioned before, what always happens is we sit down to answer questions, and nobody says anything. And then as soon as we break for lunch, so everybody Chris runs up and says, hey, I want to know about uh, water-cooled versus air, or what is three-phase versus single-phase, or uh, where do you get your mix, and what's in mix? And so now's your chance to ask uh, a whole bunch of questions. Otherwise, I'm going to do all the talking, because I have some great things I want to talk about. Uh, in the front. So I'm glad you, the air-cooled versus the water-cooled, does the CB350 come in both? The CB350 only comes air-cooled. Uh, it's not, it's a two horsepower compressor and that's not so large that it's going to fill this room with hot air. So it's the most, uh, it's the easiest way to run it because people like to put them in all different environments from trucks uh, to their laundry room uh, to all sorts of places. So if you had a um, ice cream parlor, uh, you, you, uh, the CB350 is your starting machine. And then you're going to go into the bigger ones, and they'll be water-cooled, and you'll pay for plumbing lines. But uh, the easiest way to start is with the CB350 air-cooled. Well, you don't have to pay for plumbing lines. Uh, I have a 24-quart water-cooled, yeah. and you see how we do it. Mm -hmm. We just put a coupler on the uh, mop sink faucet, and, uh, and the, the machine comes with two hoses coming out of the back. One is for the water going in cool the motor, and the other is the water coming out, the warmed water coming out. And I just put the coupler on my mop sink faucet for the water going in. Water's always on, and that does, and then it escapes into the sink just like this one does. The manufacturer doesn't recommend that, but we'll talk about it later. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Too much risk of uh, not enough water supply. Some people's sinks don't have enough, or they leave the you drain mean incoming? Filtering. Yeah, incoming. Huh. But yours is working fine, so don't worry about it. Well, it's worked fine for eight years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real now simple. you got to be worried, though. No, 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 don't worry. I didn't so, know that. So how do you recommend? Um, if you're Steve will up, come out to your store. <laughs> check your plumbing lines. The, the connection is called a garden hose connection, of all things, and it's nothing more than that. Just you have a fitting uh, in your ice cream room, in this room, like you'll see in the back there. Uh, behind the machines, as if you were going to wash your car. And you're just connected up, and you're done. And the, the return line, because the water's going to go through, it's going to uh, um, cool off the engine or the compressor, and the tap water, the groundwater temperature, it might be 60, 850, uh, is going to come out of the machine always at around 108 degrees. And you, you, I have drains in the floor here, but you'll notice the machines aren't near them because the water comes out of the machine under partial pressure, which means it will pump it all the way over to the sink, or if the sink was in my office, I could go up the side of the wall, over the top, and down again. So it's, it's really very versatile. And water-cooled versus air, as long as we're on it, um, water is expensive. Water is expensive everywhere in the United States because now they're charging sewer. Uh, but your water bill goes up pennies a year. Uh, very, very small increments. Uh, air-cooled, if I have a large air-cooled machine in here, like Jeff is running, but in air-cooled, it's going to take this room up 10 degrees in an hour and, and keep taking it up because I'm producing so much heat. So I have to turn on the air conditioning uh, to cool the room down to be more comfortable for the employees and the store itself. Well, air conditioning is based on electricity. Electricity is based on fossil fuel. So either you're using water to cool. Connected. Yeah, exactly. So you're either using uh, wa uh, electricity in the form of air conditioning uh, to cool your uh, room, or you're using water. And uh, water is less damaging to the environment because no matter what anybody says, not one drop of water has ever left the face of the earth. It's all still here. It just moves somewhere else. Really? It, well, it's not in Saudi Arabia, but it's, it's in Iowa. But it doesn't... It, it evaporates and it comes back down as rain. All of it? Comes All of it comes really? back down as rain. But electricity is something that you use up. And electricity goes up four times a year, and your water bill goes up, you know, pennies a year. The other thing people point out to me uh, is, well, I, bought, I have an existing store, and I bought an Emory Thompson, and my water bill went from uh, $200 to 350 I can see how much it's costing me. Whereas if I did, if I did air-cooled, I don't see any increase. That's because you're running a store and it's summertime and you expect your electric bill to be higher in the summer 
because you're running air conditioning and all this other equipment. So the, the cost of cooling a compressor, no matter what it's doing, a room, a freezer, uh, anything, the cost is hidden by your cost of electricity. It's just another added cost in there. And you go, ah, say la vie, my electric bill went up. What else is new? But your water bill stands out. You say, oh, my water bill, I didn't have an Emory Thompson this year, or I didn't have a Taylor soft ice cream machine uh, or uh, some other brand, but I can see my water bill went up. And that's, that's why. So um, by general consensus around the industry, water-cooled is more efficient uh, better for the environment than is air cooled, and um, here in Florida, you know, we use all water cooled. Now, if you're on a, uh, a septic tank, I don't want a water cooled system because I'm putting pure water back into the tank, and I'm going to fill it up. It was supposed to be filled up with waste, not not fresh water. But we build them either way, and you can have either way. But everybody who's ever bought an air cooled has come back to me for their second machine and said, "Oh, gee, no, I'm buying water cooled this time." I don't want that electric bill for the air conditioning. Uh, you had a question. Someone else had a question back there? I, I thought... Yeah, yes. What, what are the different temperatures you'd serve the different ice creams at, like gelato ice cream, Italian ice, uh, custard? Like, what are the different serving temperatures? Depends on who you're asking. If you're asking Jeff, it's whatever I say I'm going to do. Uh, if you're asking what an ice cream parlor does with multiple flavors, it is normally, Jeff is unique to the industry as far as what he does. But if you were running an ice cream parlor with ices, ice cream, gelato, the ice cream would be uh, colder than what Jeff serves at. It would be at about six degrees. That's what you see in a normal ice cream parlor. Your gelatos would be around 10, 12 degrees. They're softer, and that's more like what Jeff's doing is a gelato temperature. And your Italian ices, because I use no chemicals whatsoever, is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can put my ice cream and gelato in the same cabinet. I can either serve the gelato colder or I can warm everybody up, which would be probably my preference, do it more like Jeff. Uh, serve everything at about 12 degrees, and then the ices at 16. If you go to an ice cream parlor and you see Italian ices and hard ice cream in the same cabinet, all I can tell you is run like hell. It, because it means that they're using chemicals, a lot of chemicals, uh, in order to suppress the temperature of the product so that it'll scoop in the same cabinet. Because ices and ice cream will not scoop in the same cabinet um, unless you load it up with chemicals, and I don't do that. I do all natural. So you're, so you're saying so the ice is soft enough to serve at 16 degrees? Yeah, Absolutely, scoop. yes. And I use that cabinet uh, to the left of Jeff uh, the solid door cabinet, the visual display cabinets, the ones that you can see the ice cream, they're a nightmare. They can't hold their temperature worth a yes. darn. Uh, but these things for ice for ices, they hold the temperature beautifully, and they cost less to buy. Is it is it true if they if they over you know they? I, I've, I've bought Italian ice before. I grew up in Philadelphia, but I've been uh, to some places where they're scraping it right. Well, the flavor crystals didn't seem as good to me than the kind that you're talking about where you can just scoop it right on out. Yeah, if they've got it too cold, it's losing all its flavor. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't you say that it blooms the next day? Ice cream, not ices. Oh, not ice. Now, the beauty of ices and making ices is what you see is what you get. So like Jeff was testing his ice creams to see if it was where he wanted it, uh, that's, that's perfect. We can do the same thing with ices, except there'll be no difference whatsoever. So. If you taste the ice and say, ah, it's not lemony enough, then your choice becomes, do I add more lemon or do I actually add more sugar? Because a little more sugar will often make the flavor pop. Now, when you go to the, the freezer at night at 11 o'clock for some ice cream, right? At home. At home. Yeah. And you take out the carton or the whatever of ice cream that's been in the freezer. Okay? Now, be honest here. Yeah. And you take it, and you take a spoon. And it's a little hard to get because it's, it's hard. Yeah. And you, you get a little on the spoon, and you taste it. Now, Too cold. wait a minute, 20 minutes later, that ice cream has softened. It's tempered a little, right? And now you go around the edge where it's a little soft, and now you taste it. Now it tastes better, doesn't it? You're giving all our man secrets away. That's why <laughs> if your husband says, oh, no, don't worry, I'll scoop the ice cream for the guests, 
because we know it all melts on the outside and we're peeling all that off and eating it before one drop gets to the dining room table <laughs> and the guests. You know, we have, you know, we've been, men have been around a long time. We know all the dirty tricks. Well, what you really should be doing is, because I eat ice cream every night, and if I'm going to bed at uh, 10.30, at about 9.30, I take my ice cream, my Blue Bell, and, <laughs> and put it into the refrigerator so that it all tempers up at the same time. So there isn't that ice melt with, with the, um, you know, iceberg in the center. Uh, you should do that for a dinner party. Take your ice cream out, the haagen or whoever, and uh, warm it up, temper it up in the refrigerator for about an hour before you serve it. It'll be a much better ice cream because now, if, it's too be cold, told, if it's too cold, it freezes your taste buds. Now, truth be told, when you go to the freezer, you're taking out some of my ice cream, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> after you leave, there's a padlock that goes on there, <laughs> and it says, death to employees. Because right, right. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, yes, sir. It. What kind of warranty service is available from the... Uh, well, let, he'll answer in a second, but I'm gonna, you don't need it. Nothing breaks. Okay. There's nothing to break. But okay, go ahead. Well, um, all you have to do is pick up the phone and call here. If you've called here before, you've already noticed that we don't... Oh, good grief. Does that dog <laughs> just do that? Thanks. Your dog is calling. Let me test this. Let him go on the floor, it's all right. You know, it's one of those crank calls. Um, what you've already found out by calling here is that you get through to a live person. We don't have a telephone tree. You don't get passed around from one person to the other. You can call up and say, I want to talk to Steve Thompson, the chairman of the board. And they'll say, hold on, we'll put you right through. So that right there is unique from anyone else. Uh, also, our phones are set up so that when we close, we're uh, 7 a.m. to 3.30. When our phones close 3.30 Eastern Time, all calls are forwarded to whatever computer I'm on. So until 10 o'clock at night, I take phone calls. Or, uh, if I, and I'll see seven or eight phone calls, and probably about six of them I'm going to transfer over to other people in the office. Someone wants to buy parts. Uh, someone wants to check on delivery. These will all be forwarded, the voicemails, to different people working here so the first thing in the morning when they come in, they'll get them. If it's a, if it's a repair call and I know exactly what you're doing wrong, I'm going to call you back uh, because I can get you up and running in five minutes. And quite frankly, that makes me look like a hero. We're the only company I know that offers lifetime tech support. Um, other, I mean, if other companies had that, uh, they, they don't have anything close to it, but I joked with um, uh, our vice president, I said, you know, uh, we've been doing lifetime tech support forever. If we were like Apple, uh, we could offer lifetime tech support on our, com on our machines, and then in a few years we could make it uh, uh, five years uh, free right. tech support, right. then three years tech support, and then $75 a year for unlimited tech support. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. You have, and we don't care where you got the machine or who you are. If, you know, we don't say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you because you bought a 19... Uh, 57 used machine. Uh, we will uh, absolutely help you to our health, and no other company does that. We we are second to none in service, and as Jeff said, you're going to find out uh, three, four, five years from now, you're going to say, this thing never needs service. Um, but there's going to be a time when you're going to call and you're going to say, I remember when I bought it, it made ice cream in eight minutes. Now it's taking 12. What's wrong? Do I need a tune-up? There is no such thing as a tune-up. You get a refrigeration guy coming in to look at anything, and he says, oh, well, your dipping cabinet just needs a tune-up. Throw them out. Freon doesn't leak out. It doesn't wear out. So they're lying to you. They're just trying to run up a couple hundred dollar bill. But you call here, and you say, you know, I used to make ice cream four minutes faster. We look up in the computer and say, well, you bought the machine in 2013, and you never changed the springs, which need to be changed for $26 once every two years. And we just say, your problem is springs. Or one of my favorites was Malik Rose, famous basketball player. He now works for, would you shut up, works for ESPN. And, um, excuse me, Sammy. Malik, let me turn this off. Malik uh, opened up about a number of uh, Italian ice places in, in, uh, in Texas. Um, and, you know, he called one night and said, um, my machine is banging and clanking and it's not working, it's terrible. 
And I said, the five-year-old machine? He said, yeah, that's right. So we asked our Sherlock Holmes question, as I call it. When was the last time it ran right, Malik? Well, it ran right five minutes ago. It just started doing it. I said, okay, the odds that a five-year-old machine that's been running flawlessly and ran five minutes ago and isn't running now, what are you making? He said, oh, I'm making cherry ice. Taste it for me, Malik. What's it taste like? And he goes, oh, God, it's awful. It tastes like cherry juice and water. I said, Malik, you left the sugar out. There's nothing to freeze. You're freezing a giant ice cube. Italian ice is sugar, water, and flavor. You have water and flavor. So the solution, dump it, remix it, the machine works. If that had been Taylor, who we have run out of the batch freezer business, they don't, they're not in it anymore, so I can use their name. Taylor would have said, oh, yeah, it's Saturday night, 8 o'clock. We'll be there Monday afternoon. They would come Monday afternoon. They would put in a new expansion valve, uh, the part 250 bucks, 250 for labor. They would stand there for an hour while you made a batch of cherry Italian ice, and you'd say, whoa, aren't these people great? My machine broke down Saturday night. They came on Monday afternoon. Cost me $900, but it's running. And I'm going, you just got fleeced for 900 bucks. You left the sugar out. And, of course, the guy stayed to make a batch, so he watched to make sure you didn't leave the sugar out. When you've been building the same machinery and only batch freezers for 113 years, you're the best in the industry. There's, I mean, I, there are very few American companies that have been around 113 years. And those things are made in the USA. You're going to see it. There's no Chinese parts in there. I won't even sell to China. People go, oh, you're crazy. It's the biggest market on earth. I said, I don't need it. I don't need them coming out with a cheap version of my machine and ruining uh, a great industry. So you can buy copies of Capigiani's for $3,000, where the Capigiani sells for thirty-five, dollars but it's like vanilla. You get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I couldn't help it. Hey, what else? Anybody? On the 24 port, how long from order to delivery? Uh, this summer, we got up on the 24 courts to six weeks, uh, but our normal time is four weeks, and at this, it's even possible, possible, three weeks, but I would say on average four weeks, but if you order, you know, everybody thinks that our biggest sales are uh, uh, June, July, and August. No, you're already in business. It's too late. Our biggest sales are February, March, April, May, and that's when we're, I mean, we're, 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 we're in 137, 100. 170 countries around the world. So uh, it may be coming into winter in the north, but it's coming into summer in, in the southern hemisphere. So we're, we're full capacity all the time, and they're all handmade. So I would say on average four weeks, but um, it's the most important thing in your business. So you'd be better off to have it built, pay for it, and let it sit here. Than, I'd rather uh, you inconvenience me than me inconvenience you. I don't want the phone call. I'm opening in three days, and I don't have my machine. That gives me nightmares, <coughs> and, and I like to sleep at night. Yes? Is it the same for the six-port? Six uh, we're constantly building these, and there's no variations on it. The, the 24s and 12s, it depends on the country it's going into. It can be 380, 400, 440 volt, 220. This is pretty standard, is standard, so it's either in stock or within three weeks. Right now, we're running three weeks. We build them in batches uh, of machines. It's a walk around assembly line, which you'll see, but everything is brought to the machine and installed, and uh, every machine gets tested for three and a half hours. I had a running discussion with a guy uh, all last week when I was over in Jupiter sitting by the pool. Uh, we were trying to get his machine going, and it finally turned out, because he was freezing up, it turned out he, he was taking your formula from here and cutting it in half. Well, this is a 10-quart machine. And so he was operating the CB350, a 6-quart machine, as a 5-quart machine. Oh, and he was only putting 3 quarts of mix in. So she was freezing up because it was missing a quart of mix. But it wasn't yeah. until he said, but I'm doing what Jeff said. Eek. I said, it's, it's not quite the same. <laughs> no. Uh, Anybody else? We have a great lunch coming. Yes. Um, I've seen in some Italian ice stores they have products that are like marbled. And I've seen you make where it sort of segregates the three colors and how you dip it. I, I saw that one episode. But how do they create the product that's marbled, marbled throughout like that? They're buying it either commercially, uh, so it's made on a, a quarter of a million dollar continuous freezer, or they're making it a soft ice cream machine. 
uh, which can blend vanilla and chocolate together, two heads. The problem with that, with the soft ice cream machine, is the sugar water is so abrasive that it, their blades aren't thrown against the walls. They fit very tight. And so as the blades wear out, the machine becomes less and less efficient. So when you make Italian ice on a soft serve machine, uh, you are, can you give me the bent up one, please? It's, it's over oh, there. That's, a, that's another way to do the three. Yeah, that's flavors. the three flavors right there, uh, is you put this into the tub and you make uh, lemon on one side and then put it in the freezer. Then you make cherry on one side and put it in the freezer. And then you make blueberry and put it in the freezer. And then you pull this out and now you've got three flavors. And when you scoop it, you scoop it around mm -hmm. and you get the colors that you want. I had one person return one. Uh, he will remain nameless. You'll find out why. But uh, he said he was using it in the very first day. Uh, it got all busted up. I said, well, tell me what you did. He said, well, I, I took the, the, uh, the three divider and I put it into the machine and I started to make my cherry and it came out like that, or better view, like that. Uh, I guess it's pretty obvious. You don't put this into the machine because you can't break the machine into three flavors. You break the tub into three flavors. So it, it really bent up nicely. But we sent him a new one for free because I get so much mileage out of the story. <laughs> I've made thousands of dollars telling that story. <laughs> yes? The six quart comes in three phase and 220? No, the six, the six quart only comes in 220 volt single phase. Okay. Um, you don't want, the Italians and the, the um, Chinese make all their machines and, and companies that sound like they're American, like Electrofreeze. That's Capigiani, that's an Italian company. Um, they all make their machines in three phase for the most part uh, because that's the standard power over in Europe. All power in the United States is 220 volt single phase. Any building you go into in North America is going to be, have 220 single phase coming into the building, and then your breaker box breaks it down to 115 volt to, for plugs and stuff. Over in Europe, it's all three phase. This building has three phase because I'm a factory, and I need 100 times more power than your, your store or your house ever would. So I paid uh, $60,000 to bring three-phase power into this building. It's now 90,000. And are you gonna spend 60 or 90,000 to bring it into your building? For what? It doesn't save you anything. It doesn't get you any break. It's no more powerful. It just means that I can bring twice as much power over a transmission line as single phase. But what you need in a store is 200 amps of 220 in single phase and you're covered. You got everything you need. The other thing is if you buy used a three-phase machine and your store actually has three-phase, that's wonderful. Except in, in the old days, people owned the building. And that was great. They were going to stay there forever. Now, when you expand, you're going to go to another location. And if the next location doesn't have three-phase power, your machine is a brick. It is not, you can't use it. Uh, you cannot make a single-phase machine run on three-phase power and you can't make a three-phase machine the other way. You, you can make a single-phase machine run on three-phase power. Take it back. It's three wires and it's three-phase. To get uh, single-phase power, we drop a wire. Now that's single-phase power. So if you tell me your building is three-phase, you got a single-phase machine, fine, drop a wire. But if your machine is three-phase and you want to run it on single, you can't do it. It, it won't run. So that's a what problem with used machines and people, it's sad to see. People buy them, and then all of a sudden they say, I can't run this machine. And the, the, manu the, the, the person who sold it to you said, well, you can buy a phase changer. Well, the phase changer has to be three times bigger than the machine. So you need about a 12 horsepower phase changer. And phase changers burn out in three years. And they cost about $2,900. So every $2,900, you're every three years you're spending $2,900 for a machine that cannot run 24 hours a day like Jeff's can. Uh, you can run it for about three or four hours and then it's got to rest because of the phase changer. Phase changers, and they say, oh, he's not telling the truth, it's a lie. No, they're not telling the rest of the story. That cabinet over there, if that was on a phase changer, that's a constant load all day long, minus 10, all day long, minus 10, no problem. A batch freezer, is starting with a watery product and freezing it down stiff. 
the electric load, the amount of power we use, goes up as the electricity, uh, as, as the uh, ice cream gets thicker. And that burns out phase changers. So beware. Does anybody currently have a store, an ice cream place? I know you do. We are opening. You have one? Uh, we are opening. We are eating. You're opening? Yes. Oh, where? At Cape Coral, Florida. Cape nice. Coral, very nice. Great. Very nice. Uh, uh, that's that's good area. Uh, anyone else? So okay. everyone else is here investigating to possibly open a place. Is that right? Who, who's going to do just start with just ices? No, ice cream. Ice cream. Ice, everybody's ice cream. Ice okay. cream. Gelato. Eh, gelato. I ice know. cream. I know. Ice. Gelato cream. died. Well, as it will. As will frozen yogurt, as will soft serve, as will uh, cream ice. Oh, they'll all die because ice cream is universal. Yeah. If you put a bowl in front of this cute dog, ice cream, he'll eat it. Like you once said, everybody either eats ice cream or wants to eat That's ice it. cream. That's it. Six everybody billion in the people. There are 7.3 billion people <laughs> in the world, and if we take 1.3 billion as the, uh, the, the lactose intolerant and the dairy-free and the sugar-free, if you get rid of all those, you're left with six billion people who all want your product. And you watch the cars go by right now on the street there, they all want ice cream, whether they're six months old in the car seat or 106 years old in the driver's seat. Hopefully not. <laughs> they all want and like ice cream, everybody. So the first thing you do when you open a store is to put a sign out front with two words on it, ice cream. Mm -hmm. I don't think you ought to call it a creamery or a schlamboozle or any <laughs> ice cream. You can call it Nikki and Fred's ice cream. Uh, another, a girl just uh, opened up in Vero Beach, and it's Smiley Riley's ice cream. That's a cute name, Smiley Riley's ice cream. But whatever it is, it's ice cream. Uh, and that's it. Open your door, and they'll come in. I and put an, keep coming in. I put an asterisk on this and watch. Jeff's eyes are going to roll. Uh, to me, the two biggest things in the ice cream industry, a subset of the ice cream industry, are pint sales and dairy-free ice cream. There are eighty. There are seventy-five million of us baby boomers, and we eat ice cream. We eat high-fat ice cream. Uh, the millennials. There are eighty-five million of them. I have four children who fall into the millennial age. They're all professionals and in their 30s, and they just don't care for ice cream. If I have- So that's 150 million people, and there are seven and a half billion people. And that's why I have, if I had an ice cream parlor, I, had, I would have absolutely four flavors of dairy-free. Um, my four children will, if I serve them a haagen at Christmas, they'll eat it and enjoy it, but they don't stock it in their freezer like I might with my Bluebell. Um, they wouldn't keep it on hand. The Dairy Free is a fabulous product. I can do anything that's made in ice cream, I can do in Dairy Free. And I, I butt my head up against people, say, uh, up in Connecticut or uh, New York, Long Island, who uh, they've, they've got a good argument. We've been in business 40 years. We make a lot of money. We have a lot of customers. What do I need with another fad, like yogurt or gelato? because this isn't a fad. This is an age group who has put down the parameters that they like this product. I like it a lot. I find it very refreshing. Uh, as you, a sad fact of getting older, and I'm not claiming I'm getting older, but uh, when you get older, you're not gonna eat a filet mignon every night. It's just too rough on the gut. And the dairy-free is extremely refreshing and you're tapping into a market. I tell them the reason you need it is, yeah, you make a lot of money and you're doing well, but you got 85 million people who are not even walking through your door. And I don't want to miss out on all those people. I mean, uh, I wouldn't build a machine and say, uh, oh no, you're, here's a specific age group. You can't buy from me because uh, I, I, just, I don't want to sell to you. You're not, you're not the right, you're not the right uh, product that you're making. It's a great product. I use Mammy's, uh, which is, uh, actually, they call it Mommy's. It's M-A-M-I-S uh, gelato, and they call it gelato. It's actually dairy-free, and it's a, it's a great product. Is that a mix? 
It's a powdered mix. Uh, I'll show it to you later because if I let go of Sammy, she's going to climb right into this lady's lap. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she's going to anyway. Um, it's a great product, and you know, keep an open mind. I'm still an ice cream person through and through, but I think this dairy free is fantastic. Yes. Um, what is it made out of? Coconut. Coconut. Yeah, just coconut. coconut. And that's what makes it so good. I mean, doctors love coconut. And um, people who are against it, they try and they say, wow, that really is very refreshing. It's not a replacement for ice cream, but it's, it would be like if you owned an ice cream party and said, I'm only selling vanilla. And if you don't want my vanilla, that's tough. You know, if you want mint chip, go somewhere else. I don't think that's the same. Uh, it's not quite the same, but... It's, and it's not for you. Look at your age group. I don't think age group. Your, your, your age group is hard wheeling, head, heavy drinking, crazy people who want big portions of dairy. My philosophy is you can't be all things to all people. I'm just when being are, two groups. I, I let you talk. Just two groups. I think I let you talk. Maybe I'm mistaken. You can't serve all masters. When you open a store, if you sell ice cream, ice cream is sweet and it's a dessert. If you're trying to substitute it by something that's healthful, it doesn't play with me. But I'm not promoting healthful. I'm promoting that it's delicious. Well, but you can't, you can't compare my ice cream to your dairy free. You can't. No, I don't. So They're then why serve products. it? If it's not the health benefits, why would you serve it? Because if you weren't right next door to the largest retirement community in Forget the country. Forget where I am. I could open in Des Moines, and it's the same philosophy. How many people are you getting from 24 to 30? As a matter of fact, the older, the, the retired generation is even more health conscious. Mm -hmm. So they don't come in every night but for But how many cream. 24 to 38s are you getting walking through your door? Probably not much. Uh, average amount. No, I think it's less than average. It's, it's too big a group to But ignore. I don't care if I don't get any. Yeah, I know. That's I like don't the guys care if I don't, I don't get any. Because you've got this large group. No, because I sell a product that is desired by every single person other than the people who want a dairy-free product. And if, if somebody comes in, just an example, let's say they come in and they want sugar-free ice cream. People come in. Do you have sugar-free ice cream? Nope. No, I don't. I won't it, make it. Uh, yeah, and I don't think it's the same. Well, it's the same as far as the group that desires it. It's sugar-free ice cream. Lactose intolerant. Do you have anything I can have? No, yeah. I don't. I, I think the difference, Jeff, is those are labels where this is a bona fide product. This is a real product that people want. Where I have put dairy-free in, uh, one guy was typical. He called up and he said, that's the last time I ever listened to you. I put in this dairy-free, and you told me to put two flavors in. He said, what a disaster. I said, it didn't sell. He said, no, I had lines out the street that were ready to storm the Bastille because I didn't have four flavors. Storm it's the Bastille. It's creating lines. Times have changed. Uh, let me just give you my Times have changed, but dessert hasn't changed. Well, let, me give you, let me give you my example. You and I go to a cocktail party. And, uh, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. <laughs> See, I lost my... Hypothetically, we show up at the same place, and I say, hey, look, I got this new iPhone 8. And you say, oh, that's great. Maybe I'll get one someday. Thinking, just, just saying. End of conversation, because we can't stand each other, and we go off in different directions. We're actually best friends. Um, two millennials get together, and I'm, I'm sorry, to, sorry to sound stereotypical to the camera, but the truth is two millennials get together. Hey, I just heard there's a place in Brooksville that has dairy-free ice cream. Oh, really? Text it to me. OK. I text it to her. And she gets it, and she texts it to 10 of her friends who say, hey, I know there's a place in, in Brooksville that has dairy-free and nobody else does. And that person texts it to 10 of their it's friends. It's like a forest fire. The it, whole exactly. world now is lining up to eat that stuff. By time, that's right. By the time that cocktail party's over, there's 200 or more people who know that there is a store in town that sells dairy-free ice cream. And if I'm wrong, what's the problem? You, here's the problem. You, you didn't have to buy a different machine. No, here's the And you problem. can get rid of it out of your dipping cap. Here's the problem. The problem is, and, and you have to admit it, the taste is, is nowhere near good homemade ice cream. It's not. It's a different product. It's not the same enjoyment level and taste sensation as 
homemade ice cream. Neither is a hamburger versus a filet mignon. Look how he won't, he won't come there. <laughs> so they're if it's not the same, I don't want to have a product in my store. I don't want to have 30 flavors of the world's best ice cream and then four flavors of something that may be better for you, but it doesn't taste as good because I don't want people tasting this product and leaving saying, oh, it was good. I want them leaving my store saying, that's the best ice cream I ever tasted. I'm not going to turn away 85 million people because I think I, should, I know better than they do what they should eat. Let's, let's bring the 85 million to, to a market here. You open up a store right outside here. You're not talking about 85 million people. You're talking about 100,000 people mm -hmm. within 20 miles. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the 3 million people within 20 miles. So let the 100,000 go to Fred's uh, health food store and buy what they want. <laughs> Let the other millions of people come to Jeff's ice cream store for the best ice cream in the world. That's it. We had a guy in New York. The, the, we called. It was called. A, he was called the Soup Nazi. And no soup for you. Yeah, and on Seinfeld. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to pick and choose. I'm going to make the, the offer. Numbers, the actual numbers are 15 million Americans have food allergies. Only 15 million. I'm not, I'm not, and I, not, no, you didn't not hear me say allergies. one word about food allergies. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care if you have but a food allergy But even if the same not. number applies so to I'm, I'm, No, it doesn't, because I'm not promoting it or thinking it or selling it to people with allergies. If I was, you got my sign over there, it's, uh, you know, it's got Mr. Peanut choking to death. That's what, <laughs> that's what I think of allergies. I've got allergies, but I don't talk to, them, to people about it. And I don't say, you need to eat what I say, because... You have an allergy. Yes, yes, in the back. Yeah, have you tried the, the almond ice cream? Me? That's yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah, I try everything. Ben and Jerry vegan ice cream? I try it. You can't tell the difference. Oh, yes, you can. No. I'll put two bowls side by side, and a hundred people will come in, and a hundred people will choose what I make. Like, even, I think top, three or four of the top ten flavors right now in Heinz are the vegan flavors, yeah. actually. So that's, that's a trend going for it. And See, I just don't it's buy it. It doesn't taste healthy. Yeah, we still have the giant chunks of chocolate, like there's a coffee caramel. You have that in there and it's still vegan. It's not a healthy ice cream by all means. You know, it's just that all these people are wanting it. So in other words, it's a gimmick. I don't think it's a gimmick. Well, if it, if it has ingredients in it that aren't healthy and they're promoting they're not, it as a healthy... They're not trying to say it's healthy, are they? What? I think that they're coming out with like the 100 calorie ice cream for being healthy. That's a gimmick. No, if they're labeling it as vegan, if they're labeling it as vegan. That's not saying healthy. It's a, it's a choice of living. I think it's providing an option to people who really can't have dairy and are affected by dairy. Yeah, no, Let them go to another store. I don't want to, <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't want to carry a product that is Why not. Why do cream small? What? Why do you not have cream small? Why? Because you want to sell the best product in the world. Well, you are. But if you were selling Gucci shoes. And then the orthopedic generation said, you know, you ought to sell these warden <laughs> shoes because they're good for you. Hey. Would you put those in the same store as your Gucci shoes? If no. I, I resent you making fun of us with orthopedic <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. inserts in these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, no, so. I understand your point. Like, if they need something like that because it affects them, yeah, somebody else is going to make That's it. That's right. But you're just making what you believe in. I'm but, making but uh, what make I'm it making. Better than everybody else. I do. I That's make what the, I'm saying. But even the the one that you think is trash. What if you make the non dairy? What if you still make it better than anybody else? Because it still won't be as good as as ten percent butterfat full but it's flavor than ice all cream. The other ones that are it doesn't awesome. matter if it's better. It's got to come up to my <laughs> standards. When you tasted the ice cream Monday morning, your eyes bugged out. You thought it was the greatest thing in the world, and it is. I, I bust my butt making the best ice cream in the world. Why would I put something that's another product? It's not ice cream. It's not ice cream. No, it's not. <laughs> Why would I put something that's another product in my showcase there and sell it if it doesn't taste the same and you can't call it ice cream? Why would I do that? Keep your lights on. Keep my lights on? Oh, I, I've got plenty of lights on. you're given radius, your, your demographic starts to change. And that demographic wants that other type of product. My, you know what my demographic is? Good my, point. no, it's not a good point because my demographic is getting older. No, my so demographic I. is every person on this earth, except for now people are trying this sugar-free, dairy-free, lactose-free product. But everybody 
initially starts liking ice cream. It's been that way for thousands of years. Ice cream, it is the standard in the industry for frozen dessert. Not ices, not cream ice, not gelato, not soft serve, not frozen yogurt, not dairy free, lactose free, or sugar free. It's ice cream. Ice cream is the flag bearer, it's the standard. Everybody wants it. So why not open a store and appeal to the broadest part of the market, by far the broadest part of the market, and sell the greatest product? Look at right, time out, time out. One, one last question, and then we're going to break for lunch. We can take it up afterwards. We are the most watched videos about ice cream of any on earth. Uh, we have more people watching and tuning in to our, let's see, 337, 38 to 940 for one for two, 343 videos after this afternoon. The question is to you. If we didn't argue, would anybody watch? No. <laughs> <laughs> the word I hear watch. is banter. It switched to spring. I guess some real good numbers on dairy food, Oh, yeah. 70%. It should be dripping into something. Steve didn't put anything. Again. I have people to do that for me. Oh, what's that under the spout in my machine? Is it leaking? No, it's a container to, con to collect everything. <laughs> With a towel under it. Sammy, here. Okay. Here's there were sweetie. several questions going. So you want to intro the Q&A to the tape? Yeah, well, I think it's pretty obvious. We're going to sit here and answer questions, so... Uh, who wants to fire away with the first question? If not, we'll start. Yes, sir. Why do you call the dog Sammy when I, I thought her name was Sadie? Sadie was our previous golden retriever who lived, I think, to be about 13. And uh, Sammy has taken over. And the interesting thing about her is uh, Sadie, Sarah Jane Thompson, Sadie came from Boston from a AKC breeder. And Samantha Jane Thompson, she's already here. Yeah, I'm her. Samantha Jane Thompson came from a breeder in New York. It, when we got the AKC papers, it turns out that they both have the same great-great-great-grandparents who are haagen and Isis Queen. <laughs> I mean, if that isn't what they call a godwink, I don't know what it is. Yeah. And it was only six months after we got uh, Sammy that we got the paperwork, and we're looking at their lineage, and there's the same names that were on Sadie. So they're yeah. very yeah, similar. Let's go to a real question. <laughs> that was, was a good one. That was. Hey. Go ahead. Is that a water-cooled machine or an air-cooled machine? The CB350 here is air-cooled only. The uh, 12 and 24 and 44 come either air or water, depending on your situation. 90% of the machines, maybe 95% of the machines that leave here, the bigger ones, are water-cooled for very good reason. And that is, uh, uh, if you turn on an air-cooled machine, you're going to throw a lot of heat into this room. So this 70 degree room is gonna be up to 85 in about an hour and a half. You then have to remove that heat because your employees and you are uncomfortable and your ice cream's melting. You have to remove it by air conditioning. Water's expensive, but it goes up pennies a year. If you look at your water bill from last year to this year, it's hardly changed, even though it's expensive. But you look at your electric bill and it went up four times last year. And what about efficiency? The water cooled machines are probably a couple of minute uh, faster than air cool. Yes, they are. How much water do you think one of those batches took? Um, about uh, a half a gallon of water a minute, so an eight minute batch for ice cream would be four gallons of water, about and two toilet flushes. You can reclaim that water. Oh, it's, it? The water uh, hooks up to your water source, goes into the machine, cools it, and then that same water comes out. So you can reclaim it. Uh, for your sinks, stuff like that, your mop sink, your hand sinks, your, uh, not your hand sink, but your three base sink. But it's water, it, where do you live? We have strict septic laws in Massachusetts. Septic, Massachusetts. you have to go air cooled, or what I would do nowadays is they make a water recirculating system, which looks like a small central air conditioning unit that we have in our homes down here. And it's, it's, it's not any bigger than this. And it sits outside, and instead of sending in cool air, it's filled with antifreeze, and it sends chilled antifreeze to the machine, which heats it up to 108 degrees, that's removing the heat, 
and sends it back outside where it chills it again, over and over and over. So you're off the water grid. You're not using a bit of water, and yet you have all the advantages of a water-cooled machine. Now, my store is uh, septic, and I use water-cooled. Well, I ran into his problem when we had a lady who was on a cranberry bog and uh, was going to dump 108-degree water into the bog, and you thought the, the, the whole wrath of the federal okay. and state government was going to come down on okay, her. Okay, but I'm okay. You're okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're okay, but you're okay as far as that. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, you've got to go. I would do a water research or air cool. Paul. Okay, so you talked about the bigger shops going to three 24-quart machines. Who? Oh. No, my friend Evan has three of my, uh, your Emery's, the 24s. Okay. So would you recommend two 24 quart on, because of product making, would you, re would you recommend one for What years? stage of business are you in? We're in stage one. Well, I'm just talking about the future. Would, would you well, let the future to? play out. First, see where you're going. Uh, I ran my store. I began it on a six quart, and I ran it for just under a year on a six quart machine making money and then uh, I moved to the 24. Uh, now I still have 124 uh, and we I guess we do maybe 400 gallons a week uh, on the 124. Doesn't mean we make 400 gallons of ice cream a week but we always have about 400 gallons of ice cream. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't plan further than your first 24 and then see where you go. I agree 100 percent with what he said with a slight modification. When do you know you need another machine? Um, yes, yeah, start with the CB350. It's a fabulous machine. It's got the highest resale of any machine on the market. Emory Thompson's don't exist used. It's just plain and simple they don't. You can look for the next two years and people call up and say, I've been looking for two years for Emory Thompson, and I just feel like a fool. You could have been in business two years ago making all the money Jeff did, except you're looking around to save a couple of thousand on a used machine. They do not exist. Jeff wouldn't sell off uh, his uh, any, Emory, Emory Thompson any more than he would sell off uh, his car. You know, it, it just isn't going to happen. You won't find him. But you start with a CB350, you go up to a 24. 24 is capable of handling up to three stores. No problem at all. And when you call up, and, and unfortunately, I'm brutally honest, because it pays in the long run. If I don't sell you this year, I'll sell you in a few years. Uh, you say, oh, I'm running the machine eight hours a day. I need another machine. I go, no, you don't. Uh, hire you probably somebody else. Hire a, a second person. Uh, I, I, I used to say women uh, who had children in elementary school, because they have all day off and they're not doing anything. Boy, did I get slapped for that one. Uh, but uh, the reality was children get sick, and so that employee becomes not 100% reliable. The intelligent thing to do, if Jeff ever had to do it, is hire an off-duty policeman, fireman, or someone recently out of the military. They have one thing in common. All three of them look at a task as a mission. Uh, my, my guys in the Bronx looked at it as like, oh, I've got to work at Emory Thompson for another eight hours before I can go back to the bar. Uh, the, that, those three groups, police, fire, and military, look at it as my mission tonight is to come in at 11.30, make ice cream till 5.30, fill up his freezers, and then go home. And, and who better can you hand the keys to your business over to than someone from one of those three groups? And the, and, and the point is, uh, just to funnel this down, what he's saying is that a 24 can run 24 hours a day. Try. So uh, when I make uh, 100 gallons in six hours, uh, that's, that's what I'm making. If I had uh, Frida come in after that, she could make another 100 gallons in the next six hours. So that machine, nobody's using it to its capacity, not even close, not even me. A and I'll run it. Now that we're getting into season, I'll run it six hours, three days a week, or four days a week uh, to keep up with the demand. And, and that, I think, whoa. And I always text him and, or call him and say, Steve, thank you. This machine is running flawless. I swear I do this. It's running flawlessly, and I'm just finishing 100 gallons. Now, if, if I had a second store or needed it, another machine isn't going to change anything, but another employee would. So don't worry about the machine. It'll handle all you can give it. I, I'm not saying this because of him. It's, you said it the other day. It's built like a tank, right, Paul? 
It's built like a tank. And, and it just needs an, a, an employee to run it, an operator. Now, of course, there are people who buy the 44 cord. And here's my test when they call up, because I stick to what Jeff has just said. But if you called up and something has changed in your business, you just got a, an order, a, a continuing order with Publix for vanilla ice cream. Uh, my question to you would be about selling you a 44 quart is, for every tub of maple walnut that you make, how many tubs of vanilla do you make? And you say, oh, well, we make 20 tubs of vanilla to every maple walnut. It's that much more popular. Fine. You need a 40, 44 quart machine because the 44 is going to crank out four tubs of solid flavors. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, like making anything where you're variegating in or adding nuts at the end or anything like that you may not be fast enough for a 44 quart. So they buy the 44 to do the bulk flavors and keep the 24 for the um, exotic flavors. And then when you get to Italian ice, all bets are off. It's just sugar, water, and flavor into the machine. There's nothing fancy about it. If you need to quadruple production, you buy a 44 quart. That, that's simple. But most times I am talking people out of a 44 and saying, get a stick with your stick with your 24. Now the 24 you can figure uh, uh, 20 gallons an hour. That's that's the real world. 20 gallons 20 an hour. 20 to 30 actually. Well, if you were I, doing just vanilla. Well, nobody makes vanilla. So 20 <laughs> 20 an hour and we had it down where we were working on the next one, of course, which is what you want to do. You want to work on the next flavor prep time while this is running for the eight, nine minutes that, it's, that a batch is. And we made double batches. So I figure uh, 20 minutes a batch. And a batch will get you six to seven gallons. So you're roughly 20 gallons an hour. I go in five hours, clean up time on both ends and everything in prep, six hours, 100 gallons, I'm done. So if you had, uh, if you had twice the need for that, then just have Connor come in at 2 o'clock when you're done, Paul, and Connor starts his six hours, and you got 200 gallons that day, and the machine is still saying, bring it on, bring it on. It, it's, it's just a piece of iron or stainless steel that, that will keep running. It's, it's, in a, it's ridiculous. It's silly business. Any other questions? Come on, you had one. You know what happens here is the second we end the question and answer, you're all going to come running up to us and say, tell me about this. So Connor. ask it now because other people want to know too. Yes. Do you have any customers making CBD oil ice cream? That's what we we're going to go into next. Uh, yes, I do. I have, a, customer, I have a, a good number of them. And I'm conflicted. And Jeff is hearing this for the first time. And so we're going to discuss what we think about it. Um, so here's my approach so far. Um, I've got a customer down in Tampa. He's getting $25 a pint for CBD oil. Unbelievable. And he sells out. Uh, CBD oil, if you're watching this for the first time and don't know, uh, because I didn't, but then again, I'm a baby boomer. Why would I know? Um, CBD oil is an extract from marijuana, and it, it uh, says that it has none of the um, THC. THC in it, no, none of the properties. However, I was talking to a uh, United Airlines pilot uh, over Christmas, and he said, well, we have a little bit of problem with it uh, in that it's not that pure. It's about 99% pure, and that darn 1% will show up on a drug test, <laughs> and, the, and, and not United American or JetBlue or any of the others has any say on this. The, uh, the, the Air Transport Authority, the government, says any traces of any drugs, you don't fly. In fact, you're probably fired right on the spot. That, that'll be questionable. Uh, so that part of it is what I call wild, wild west. There's no decisions on it. Uh, everybody tells me there's no hallucinogenic value to it whatsoever, so that's <laughs> fine. For lack of a better words, I don't know the right pot's, terminology. No, no, no. Pot's not hallucinogenic. Well, whatever. So that's what the I, acid, man. All right. So what I... Well, I I used to remember that, but I forgot what it was about. Um, so, whatever. Um, so, I ordered some up. I thought, this is great. This is going, and this is going to spread. There's no question about it. It is going to spread like wildfire. I'm going to get a lot of phone calls about using CBD oil. And uh, I have no problem putting it into ice cream. It's simple. 
I mean, it, it, it couldn't be easier. And the benefits to it are unbelievable. I mean, if, if you're uh, if you have panic attacks, it can help that. If you uh, have arthritis, it can relieve that. Uh, it can and it calm your stomach. It, it does a whole lot of different things. Um, uh, I think Ken told me that uh, his dog was upset about uh, the um, uh, lightning and thunder, and they gave him one little drop on his tongue, and it calmed him down. Or else someone told me that. I mean, that's dog great. Died. That, Please, did not. So that's great, too. There's going to be a lot of positive properties about it. And I, I don't have a problem with it as far as a product. Now, here's what I do have a problem with. And that is um, I had some, my kids are in uh, Denver. I had some, but I, I didn't buy it from them. I had it bought through a company that sells it in upstate New York. They got it from Colorado, upstate New York, down to here. Two little vials of crystals. I mean, really small, 45 bucks. But if I can get $25 a pint, who cares? Who cares about the cost of the product? But there's no rules or, or controls on this yet. So I looked at it, and I looked at the texture, and I put it down on paper and shoved it around. And I thought, you know what? I could put uh, um, uh, bar sugar in here into the same vial and add a little vinegar. It was the first thing I came up with that wouldn't hurt anybody. So it would have a bitter taste to it. I've never even tasted the stuff, but to the person who doesn't know, it, so it wouldn't taste like sugar. It would taste like something. So I get this. It comes in the mail. Fifteen minutes later, Paula comes in from buying gas for her car, and she says, you know, they're selling B uh, CBD over at the Shell station. <laughs> I go, I went to all this effort, getting it all around the country, worrying about it. the feds are going to come arrest me and haul me off to a black site, and she gets it at the Shell station. My point is... There is no rules or regulations about this. This is like the, watching the old-time Western movies where the guy rolls into the town, uh, you know, Dr. Dr. Charles's uh, magic elixir. How do you know what you're getting? Unless you buy it in Colorado where it's controlled, how do you know what you're getting? The, the guy at the Shell station could have been putting granulated sugar in there with a little vinegar and sold it to me for 45 bucks, and I wouldn't have known. That's my first problem. The second one, and there's no way I can be brief on this, so relax. I'm just waiting. Just relax. The second problem I have with this is um, there was a great book I read. It was, it was The Queen of Mulberry Street, and it was a woman who grew up, and she goes into the ISIS business. It was supposed to mimic Tom Carvel, and, uh, who I knew very well. And um, so she gets old. The grandchildren are taking over the business, and they go, hey, Grandma, we want to sell liquor ice cream in our Carvel stores, a thousand Carvel stores around the East Coast. And um, so they put it in, and the first week sales are through the roof. Fantastic, incredible. Second, third, fourth week drops down to zero. Why? Because ice cream is considered a family product, something where you bring your kids. And mothers were saying, I don't want my 14-year-old, who looks like he's 23 because he's so big and he's a football player, buying uh, rum raisin ice cream with Bacardi rum in it. And it, it hurt their business theoretically in the book because it was taking the family atmosphere away from the ice cream parlor. And I put a lot of stock in that. I'm probably going to make videos to show you how to use CBD. Uh, but am I going to recommend it? I don't know the answer. I really I do. don't. So go ahead. Okay, here's the deal. CBD oil or in any form, is therapeutic. It's made for loosening joints. It's made for rubbing on your arthritic knee. It's, it's not, obviously, it's not dessert. If you put it in ice cream and start charging $25, people are going to buy it once. Mm. And then they're going to hate you because you ripped them off. You just said the gas station where you buy a little thing for $45, you go home, you're not going back there. No. So... It, it has no place in ice cream. What does has a pla have a place in ice cream is the THC-laden product that is available in five states so far and will be available. I can see selling pot ice cream. That's fine. It's just like selling ice cream with booze in it. They're going to get high from it. So that's okay, but this is a sham, putting CBD oil in ice cream, because it costs more money, right? You're going to sell it $25 a pint. I'm not going back to that store, 
because I still have arthritis. That didn't help a lick. So uh, I don't think it has any place in our product, in our world, but that's just me. He's right. I'm right. One more thing about it. Um, I am always looking to see how to grow my business. It's been growing a whole lot. And I looked into uh, pan, Thai pan ice cream. That is a plate that is refrigerated, and you pour the mix on it, and then you got to play Benny Hanna on it for seven minutes, you know, moving around, doing this and rolling, stuff like that. Just like... Cold Stone. Uh, yeah, sort of like Cold Stone. But it, they've, they're dealing with ice cream already made. Correct. It takes seven minutes to serve a portion. You take that times 10 people, you're standing in line for 70 minutes, and Americans will not stand in line. Every, almost every single one of the, uh, the nitrogen places yeah. is out of business because you go the first time, it's novelty, it's great, maybe you go back a second time to show your relatives, and you never go back because I'm not going to wait 70 minutes for an ice cream cone. I'm just not going to do it. Here, so, but I, let me just finish. I, I was at the NICRA convention, National Ice Cream Retailers Association in, in Colorado, and there was a man next to me, and he was selling uh, the plates, the Thai pan plates that I was thinking of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And he gets $2,300 for it, really oh. cheap. He buys them for about 400 imported from uh, China. And he said he has sold about 300 of them, and very proud. And he said, and I have an order for 24 more that I'm going to place. I said, well, 300 and you're ordering 24? He said, yeah, there's only going to be 24 more sold, and then that fad is dried up. He said, that fad is not going anywhere. It's a flash in the pan, gets a lot of attention. The phone calls come pouring in. Do you make Thai pan ice cream? Yes, I can do it. Um, and then it's gone because it, it has no legs to it. And I think the CBD has no, leg, no legs to it. It's going to get a flash in the pan. If you want to do it and have it in your store and you can do it for under $1,000, you know, be my guest. But like any fad, know when to get out. You know, get a, don't spend a lot of money to get in and know when to get out because it is a fad, as opposed to the dairy-free, which to me is a trend. That was a long answer. There you go. <laughs> and I think the short answer... Already? The, the nitrogen? No, I know the nitrogen already are, but the rolled ones. The rolled ones? Are you starting to Same see those? Thing. Are you hearing a rumor or anything that they're already starting to fall out? Not yet, but the sales... For the, this, this guy who was selling them said, I can't sell anymore because they're not buying them. So yes, that means it's, it's fallen off. Here's they haven't the gone deal. out of business yet, they will. Here's the deal. There's one way in the ice cream or ice business to increase your, what were you looking to increase by adding that? Your customer base? Yeah. Your, no, your, my, my, the machines? No, here's how to increase your business. There's only one way, get more customers. That's it. Yeah. The products we sell, if you guys, the, the few people who bought the book, or it doesn't matter about the book, you have 25 flavors, 25 great flavors. If that's all you ever produce, you'll be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Just keep getting more customers in. We know how to do that now, don't we? Just keep getting more customers because everybody likes it. To try to come up reinventing the wheel, it doesn't make sense. You're spinning your tires. Just... And to me, the fat-free goes in that, that case, too, because the fat-free millennials that he's describing, what is that, 5% of the market, 10% of the market, 20% of the market? You still got 80, 80% 80 to market to and to bring into the fold. You think you can't get rich on 80% of this planet? Come on. So it, when you want to grow your business, just the amount of customers. Remember the bell on the door? That's all you got to worry about. The more that gongs when people when the door opens and closes, the more money you're making. End of story. That's it. Oh, he doesn't have fat-free ice cream. We're not going there. Oh, well, choose me. The people behind you have to get in. That's all it is. So just understand. It's so simple. It's just simple stuff. You don't need gimmicks. Gimmicks. You don't need CBD oil gimmicks. In my opinion... We differ. You don't need fat-free. You don't need lactose-free. You don't need dietetic. You don't need sugar-free because 90% of this planet wants what you have. What you have is full fat, full sugar, full flavor, sweet treats. That's what they want. They've wanted it since the Egyptians made ice cream out of snow. They still want it. Everybody likes ice cream. 
or even ISIS. Everybody likes it. So just get more people into your place. That's all it is. Simple. Sorry. Who else? I, uh, when you're making your sorbets or your Italian ice, can you make it without the sugar and just all natural juices? Depends no. what the juices like are. Let's say a lemon. No. Oh. No, because there's no, there's no sweetness in lemon. It's, it's what we in the dairy industry call solids. And solids can be dairy, or they can be coconut, or they can be sugar. Um, and a sugar-free Italian ice, don't even begin to touch it. You'll see it uh, on the market. They use a nasty product called multidextrin. It's a modified food starch. And if you read the, if you buy Stouffer's sugar, -free, I'm, a, I'm a diabetic, so I'm not supposed to have sugar. That's the other thing. We all cheat. You know, I save up, and uh, you know I'm not going to waste my cheating, uh, being a type one diabetic, on Breyer's ice cream. I'm waiting to have Jeff's stuff, uh, the good stuff. Uh, so I cheat. Um, but when you have sugar free, uh, this multidextrin is a chemical, and it says on the package, uh, if you buy say Stouffer's candies, sugar free candies, pl uh, please only eat one or two. Well, I eat the whole bag. Who doesn't? Uh, it's like saying, please only eat one or two potato chips. Because it may have a dire, uh, dire, you know, distress, stomach distress. In other words, it gives you Montezuma's revenge. It gives you the worst case of diarrhea on earth. Now, the customer says, great, I got sugar-free ice cream. They go home and have diarrhea, and they say, I didn't eat anything since last night except a cup of coffee. It must be Jeff's sugar-free ice cream. Well, don't go cream. there. You no, know I won't call it that. It, it must be the sugar-free uh, ISIS. Pizza. The keto diet? Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, on the, I'm on the keto diet. Yeah, so there's ways, is there ways around? No, because you have Only no if solids. the natural product is sweet. You can probably get away with maybe pineapple Italian ice without adding sugar if you got real ripe pineapple. I haven't been able to do it. The machines are too powerful. You can do it in your little home machine that takes an hour and a half. Uh, to make because there's so little freezing power there that it's not going to freeze to the wall. Now, let me These things why, lock up. Why are you trying to do this? Well, because in my, in my store, I sell to all. I find ways to sell. I sell. Well, first. you know, jack of but all trades, snow. master of none. No, I know, but like for me, I, but I do snow cones too. Well, so, where are you getting sugar free syrup? Well, I'm not doing sugar free, I'm just doing all natural flavor. Good, right? don't do sugar free. No, I know. But I'm saying, is there ways? Take that natural flavor to make it into a short. Just give no, customers who want the, the difference sugar. between ice. the difference between a snow cone and an Italian ice is we have body texture and flavor. The flavor it's it's a processed product. Mm -hmm. We're taking raw ingredients and turning it into something new. No offense, because you're very successful. All all the places are. You're just taking crushed yeah. uh, ice and pouring syrup over it. There, there's there's no process there. There's it's, you know, I can't take the ingredients for a cake and put it in the refrigerator and expect it to come back as a birthday cake. Mm -hmm. I have to process it. So we're, we're a whole different ball game than uh, the shaved ice. And you when you question? put the shaved ice in, you'll still do well, but give me a, come back in a year, and I'll bet you the Italian ices are far outselling the shaved well, ice. Been selling Italian ice for two years. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah. Little profit there, huh? huh? Little profit <laughs> there. Uh, Who here's else? the okay. Go ahead. Who's yeah. who's got questions? Oh, I know you're all going to come up to us during lunch and say, "Hey, what about this?" So come on, to ask. Uh, us. Here's a question. Okay, go ahead. You were saying, you know, with pint sales and everything, do you um, take some of your ice cream, batch it up, and stick it in a freezer for people to buy in that sense as well? I don't know. You don't. No. The, remember, you used to see signs, uh, hand packed ice cream. They didn't want to go to the fr open freezer and take a pint out. They wanted it hand-packed. They wanted to watch you behind the counter, take a pint, take that big spade and jam it in there and then put the cover on it. That was hand-packed. I don't sell uh, pre-packaged ice cream uh, for a very important reason. As soon as you sell pre-packaged pints, you have to, you're in a category where you have to list the ingredients and the nutritional information on the label. And that means you have to send it out for testing and uh, analysis. Uh, expensive property. Uh, on pints? Not if you sell in your own store. If, well, if you sell them in your own store, but if they're prepackaged, 
to go, then you have to. No. No, no. only if, if it's you're selling it no. to public. I don't sell anything like that. I don't sell pints or quarts or anything. I, I love selling pints and quarts. Um, as far as the hand... To who? To the customers who walk in. And I'm going to explain how. Well, my you're not small set up for this. is a pint. Yeah, but you're not set up for this. But most of these people will be. My, uh, the, the hand-packed ice cream, like Jeff was saying, uh, I used to think the girl at Baskin Robbins liked me because my nickname in, in uh, school was Two Ton Thompson. And so I was not going to be attracting this lovely young lady who was doing the pints. And she was jamming the ice cream in there and could barely close the top. I thought, well, she really likes me because she's giving me all this extra ice cream. No, it's called a Chinese pint. And it will not hold a pint unless it's falling out of the container. And they have to weigh it in order to be accurate for the state. Anyway, what I like to do, based on Americans won't wait for anything, is I'm, I'm going home tonight and I need to pick up a couple of pints of ice cream at the local ice cream parlor. I'm going to have, the ice cream parlor is going to be set up where they're serving people ice cream and they're going to have uh, a cabinet like that filled with, or something similar, filled with pints of ice cream. And I'm going to, I'm going to rush in, I'm going to leave my engine running with the air conditioning on, they can steal the car if I want, and uh, I'm going to rush in, I'm going to grab two pints, and here is this takeout counter that says pints only. And I'm going to put them on the counter. There's nobody there. The server over here who's doing banana splits and milkshakes says, excuse me one second, I'll be right back. The server runs over, says, you want to, uh, you're paying by credit card. So runs the credit card. Do you want a receipt? No. You want a bag? No. Just like Starbucks. I just want my pints. I'm going to grab them, get back in the car and go home. I spent about three minutes and now I have ice cream to bring home for Paula and me. The speed of taking it out. Now, you're waiting online, and this server just said, excuse me one second, and runs over to take care of me. Your reaction, because it all happened so fast, is, wow, that means I could come in here at 6 at night and grab a couple of pints, and I don't have to wait online. And it's based on Starbucks. I hate flying because I have to go to Tampa International and wait online while all these people are ordering mocha, latte, this and that. I just want a black coffee. Why can't you have a line that just says black coffee? So that's what it is, is you have it there. You're getting eight, nine dollars a pint. That's, that's good money in our world. And, uh, and it's just grab and go. So I like him. Jeff, it doesn't fit his business model, which is a nice, polite way of saying he's absolutely wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you why I don't hey, sell pints. I'm not the one going around with a towel on my shoulder. I'll tell you why I don't sell pints. Very simple. My store is an experience. It's a destination. It's a place for people to come and enjoy a little slice of life. And they can buy pints anywhere. Uh, if you're set up to, to make pint sales part of your business, then when they're close to home or at home and they say, you know what, let's go grab some pints. And on the way, oh, I have to stop in the supermarket. Oh, let's grab the pints there. Pints are pints. Ice cream is ice cream, but pints are pints. I want them to come into my store, enjoy the experience, hear the music, meet their friends, have a good time, eat some ice cream. That's what I want. And that's what made me a lot of money. Uh, Steve originally, when I sat back there the first day, Steve professed the benefits of wholesale selling of ice cream, where you take your ice cream and you go see the chef in the morning and he agrees to sell your ice cream and then you've got ice cream at the Wazoo and all these restaurants and everything. Uh, I, that's what I did when I first sat here, just like all of you people like this. Oh, that sounds good, but it didn't work. Uh, as soon as you do it, you relinquish your identity to the restaurant. And it's not your ice cream anymore, it's their ice cream. And the way you take care of your ice cream is one way, the way they don't take care of your ice cream is their way. It's, it's a whole different deal. Uh, it's possible, you can do it, but it's very simple business. Buy your product, make the ice cream and sell it and just get more and more customers. It's, it's, it's just an easy way to go about it. No middleman. Jeff's ice cream parlor is like, if you're watching this on a video, and this is why we differ. Careful. Is like the movies Back to the Future. It's, it's, a, it's a destination. It's an old-fashioned type of going to sit down with my girlfriend and have some ice cream. It's dessert. 
Yes, it's it is. a treat. It, that's why it's a destination. You've got all those retired people in that community coming over, and it's their night out. It's their entertainment. I have no problem with that, but at the same time, you got, most of you are too young to know this, but McDonald's, when I was growing up, was open from 11 in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, and they sold hamburgers and cheeseburgers and fries and milkshakes, and, and that was about it. And then somebody at headquarters looked around and said, you know what? This building's sitting here all, after, all night long and all morning long, and the parking lot's here, and the electricity's here. We've got to keep everything cold. Why don't we open for breakfast? Hello, breakfast. And the whole world of fast food changed. So all I'm doing is I'm taking his little bit of nostalgia of we are a destination. We come because we like it uh, when he comes out and he's got a new flavor in here. Try this. And we like the hominess of it. And I'm also adding, but I can also bring value uh, additional money coming in because I'm still paying $3,000 a month and I can uh, augment that with different ways of selling ice cream. So we're both right. You know, there's no question about I it. I just don't see it as additional money. I see it as substitute money. Whether you get it this way or that way, it's the same dollar. Whether they take a pint to go or they come in and sit and eat it, same dollar. Well, I'm, What you need to do is get more people. I'm developing a... Uh, I'm bringing back our machine from 1923 and 1995, the frozen custard machine. And so by bringing in a whole different machine, I'm going to get more people. So under your theorem, I would just stay with, you know, a, no, a 24 one. core. I'll buy one. <laughs> I would stay with one machine and just say, I'll sell the one machine to the world. You have to have a little bit of variety. But it brings up a good point, and then we can start breaking for lunch. And that is, if you do expand out into different areas, make sure it makes sense. When someone calls me up and says, I'm going to add uh, hot dogs to my ice cream. Why? Well, because the, hot, the ice cream's going so well, I know that I can, um, I can augment that by selling sandwiches and, and hot dogs in my store. I say, oh, great. Uh, call me back in a month and let me know how much you want to sell your machine back to me for. I'll give you, you know, five cents on the dollar. Uh, because you're going to go broke. Well, what do you mean? Well, I said, number one, your reputation is ice cream. Now you're adding, you're adding hot dogs. That's, that's, what's, that's what Friendly's did. They added cold sandwiches. Then they added hot sandwiches. Then they added meatloaf. And then all of a sudden, hey, we ought to open up an ice cream parlor in this town. Nobody sells ice cream because Friendly's becomes known as, and Swenson's, the same thing happened. Uh, but also with hot dogs, the grease in the air, ice cream is a protein. Anything you cook is going right into that protein, the dairy. So your ice cream is going to taste like uh, Hebrew National <laughs> hot dogs in about three days. I mean, it's a killer. And, I, and people call up and they say, oh, what are you going to sell? I'm going to sell hot dogs and ice cream and, and burgers and fries. I say, let me give you the phone number for Capigiani. I, I, I don't have time to talk to you. You know, love you, but here's Capigiani's phone number. Go talk to them because you're going to fail. And when you make your uh, gallons, how many gallons do you, when you make your ice cream, how many gallons? Is it one gallon, two gallon, three gallons, or four? Or what, what a batch is? Yeah, what is your batch? A batch is six or seven gallons. Okay, how many scoops do you usually get out of, like, I get scoops? ten scoops per gallon. Ten scoops per gallon. Depends on the size of the scoop. It's 128 ounces. If you're selling eight ounces, you're going to get 13. If you're selling four ounces, you're going to get... 26. Right. So, I, I sell, uh, the girls at my store pack it in. Our cups are 12 ounces, and they're putting 16 in there. 16 Yeah, ounces. that's right. 16. They're giving out pints for $6. Yes, sir. You say you're bringing back your custard machines, um, but these machines have a setting for a custard, right? Yes. These are the, the, especially the smaller ones will do custard. Custard is a low 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 air content product uh, that's 10 percent sometimes 12 percent fat and the addition of 3.2 percent egg yolk by volume fancy way of saying it's got egg yolks in that is the definition of custard but custard as it's sold in the midwest is a uh, a continuous freezer it's constantly it's a narrow tube only four inches as opposed to these and it's constantly going through that tube and constantly going down the chute so a major part of it is that it's visual that would you, be culvers, you, you right? just That's culvers. You just turn it on and let it run all day long. And it's a lot of that visualness of it that, that makes it great. 
Also, ice cream fresh out of the machine is always fantastic. So you're getting ice cream that was made a few seconds ago. So is there any difference in, in the, so let's say the 24 quart, is there any difference in taste to the custard as opposed to a, you know, a custard machine? Uh, yes, the custard machine will actually go to lower air content than a batch freezer can do. Uh, we get very close with it, but if someone was going to order a 24 or a 44 just to make custard, I would say you need to switch machines because you're doing so much volume, you ought to be the constant flow coming out. I'm hungry. <laughs> yes? Yeah, the, uh, one of the things I wanted to do, I mean, I'm going to do his model, but one of the things I wanted to do was, for instance, uh, our local Boy Scouts, because I'm a Scoutmaster as well, that uh, for their fun drives, if, if I package my, my ice cream in pints for them to sell, I mean, I'm crossing a line here somewhere with the packaging where I'm no longer retail and so on. I'm in another one. You are crossing a line because you're taking it out of the building and you're selling it. You, you might as well take it to the supermarket because you've taken it out of the building and now you're going to fall under the laws of labeling. And Which so, isn't impossible. No. It's just another step you have to do. It used all. to be impossible. But now so many people do it that there's whole testing labs. You just send your product to it. They actually burn it. BTUs is a measure of uh, how much heat is given off when you burn a product. And so they're going to actually burn your ice cream and figure out how many calories in this. And then they're going to list the ingredients and what percentages and all. And if you were going to do sell anything to a supermarket or a bodega or a deli or anything like that, I would go to the expense of putting the labeling on because everybody reads labels. <laughs> I read a label and it says, this is 940 calories, and I say, expletive deleted, and then start eating it because I wanted it anyway. <laughs> but I feel really bad for myself that, gee, I'm eating 940 calories, I could, be, I could have like 17 protein shakes. But, you know, we do it anyway. Anyway, how about lunch? Oh, yes. Jeff, do you have um, flash freezes? No, I don't. You don't? No. You used... Um what do you use? You haven't been watching my videos. You know, this is where we get out the boxing gloves and start, you know, okay. bring the towel. No, no need for it. No, no need for okay. it. No. So what you do make you ice cream Monday, you sell it Tuesday. You make ice cream Friday, you sell it Saturday. That's it. End of story. And put the six to nine thousand dollars in the bank. And call me two months after doing that, and tell me uh, when you bought your hardening cabinet. You won't because buy one. We do not agree at all. You're not going to buy one. He is when selling. You make it, that it doesn't crystallize. In the crystallize? Depth. Well, get ice crystals more in it. No. no because... Answer, answer. Does it? No. Of course not. It doesn't. But why? It doesn't because he's only keeping it for 24 hours. Gelaterias went out of business in the United States because they used his European model. He doesn't know it's European model. It's European model of make the stuff this morning, sell it this afternoon, sell it tomorrow, and you're done. Ice cream will keep for three days without crystallizing. After that, the ice crystals start showing up, uh -uh. and he doesn't keep it around nope. that long. No, it won't. He doesn't. How long do you keep your ice cream? I can keep ice cream a month, and it's as good as the day I made it. No, it didn't. Because I've done it here all the time. Huh? Anyway, we're not going to get into that one. You can go oh, back come and on. watch. Let's get the you box can watch a on million box videos. Uh, all I'm saying is 99% of you will own a hardening cabinet Save within, your a year, money. within a year. Put it with the money you saved from buying a glass top dipping cabinet. How many then, freezes do you have? When you, when you make ice cream and you put it in a freezer, you can put probably five or six tubs in there and overnight it'll go down in temperature. But that's if you right. fill that up, and that's what it's I do. not going to take the BTUs out of it. Absolutely, and that's what I do. I fill it up a third of the way. He's okay. got, what, 15? What? How many of those 15? Uh, 13 freezers. 13 freezers. His electric bill is, his oh, no, it thing isn't. is going no, around no, like no. this. Very small compressor, very tiny motor in him. No, and a lot of heat. How many dipping cabinets do you have? No. Uh, no. no. What do you dip up? Let's go into another story. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, if you want to save, how much money do you think you saved in these two days that you took for class? Thousands, right? Yes. Many thousands of dollars. Yes. It just, it, it's so simple. Can we it's, talk about that for a minute? What? Your class. Really? Yeah. Oh, what about it? Well, I get, I'm involved with a lot of people worldwide. We're in 171 countries, and I get asked to endorse all sorts of things. 
And I don't endorse anything that I don't absolutely truly love because it's my reputation. And if it's going to make my customers have a better experience with their machines, and it, you know, it's those of you who know Rush Limbaugh says the whole purpose of the radio program is to make him look good. Well, me endorsing things is to make me look good because if I tell you something good, uh, like buy a global uh, blast freezer, <laughs> you, you'll and you'll do well. Um, Jeff's class, if you're just watching this on video, is two days uh, before my class. We always do mine on Wednesday. Mine, it's ours. Jeff and I do this class on Wednesday, and as if you noticed, it's for free. Um, those of you who put, you all put down a deposit, and you're going to get it back as soon as you uh, leave here today, just to get you to show up. Um, this, his class, the way I put it is, I can teach you how to make uh, mint chip ice cream, how to maintain the machine, uh, how to uh, help lay out your store. I can do all that. What Jeff's class does is if an ice cream cone costs three dollars, how much should a banana split cost? And yes, I know he's not doing banana splits, but he's breaking it down to the nuts and bolts. I joke about it when people call. I say, you're going to be waiting on tables. You're going to be making ice cream. You're going to be waxing his Corvette. Well, may, all right, maybe you won't wax the Corvette. Now he's got the Volkswagen. Uh, but it's going to be so hands-on, and that's what everybody asks for. People call up and say, where can I go to a hands-on class? This class, which I think were very helpful, is not hands-on. None of you, uh, except the lady who showed us how to grate the lemons, has touched the machines today. You're still going to get a lot out of it, but it's not the whole picture. Uh, Jeff charges for his class. It's a, it's, a, it's a fair rate, especially when you look at uh, the other classes that are out there. And it's clean and simple. We, there we are have other our classes out there? Some in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have uh, our disagreements. You know, he, he, he's dead wrong, and I'm absolutely right. Uh, but he is a spectacular teacher. He, he makes everything very simple. So if you're looking to get into the business, the best thing you can invest in is, you know, buy a machine from me, but don't buy it four months in advance and tell me that you're going to experiment with 15 different variations of vanilla. Just put some vanilla into the ice cream, a generous amount, and it'll be spectacular. Done. Finished. Buy the machine, you know, a month before you open up. Jeff's class, you can't get enough knowledge. If you can get sources of knowledge, read a book uh, on ice cream. Uh, read a boring book on ice cream and say, do I really need to know all this? Uh, but Jeff's class is going to help you well, here, a whole lot. Here's what the class is. It's two days. I, I don't think I've ever done it. We've been doing this years. Done I've never talked about it. No. Uh, but here it is. It's, I couldn't remember your name. It's, that was why. It's two days, uh, very full days. We, we start at 9. We go maybe till 6, 7, or 8 o'clock at night whenever we're done. Uh, but I think the key is that it's in a working store. I've looked at other classes and they're in a convention room or a hotel room or a, uh, a classroom, uh, but this is a working store. As a matter of fact, where's Connor? Connor last night, after class ended about seven o'clock, uh, he put an apron on and went behind the counter and was serving customers. And he did great, but that experience is invaluable. But I'll teach you, because it's simple, simple business. I'll teach you where to find the store because I have a number uh, for the rent. And that's it. Don't go over it. It's easy. The first thing we talked about, it's easy to find the best place to open the store. It's very easy to find that. You go to the busiest shopping center, the prettiest one on the mainest road you got, in the heart of the best city, and you know that's the best place to open a store. But you're going to pay seven, dollars $8,000 a month. And that's going to put you out of business. You can't afford it. We're selling a $5 product. It's kind of simple. So you can't do it. You can't get that many customers initially. So there's a formula for where to find your store. And it's a great formula. And that'll teach you where the store should be. Then what do you put in it? How do you supply the store? And all the equipment you need, all the equipment you don't need. Then how to make the ice cream and the ices and the cream ice. How do we do it? So every person who, took, who takes the class, and there have been hundreds, makes the product themselves. The first day they make it with a, 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 another person. 
Second day, they each make ice cream solo. On an Emery 24, from beginning to end, they make the ice cream. I like it because I've got a bunch of workers for that week. So they make all the ice cream. And now, this year, we've added something very new to the class. It's spectacular, if I have to say so. All the people who've graduated this class, they're all in business, probably 95% of them are in business all around the world. There's a network for all these people now. It's a Facebook page that's private, and you have to get invited to. Every day, hundreds of them are talking about all the issues that come up in every phase of the operation, in finding a location, in making ice cream, in creating recipes, uh, getting customers, doing your marketing, every phase of the business, because they're all involved in it. It's like all of you opening a store and being networked on a, on a website. It's terrific. I mean, I read them all day, uh, and you will too. Did you sign up already? Did you get, okay. Uh, and that's brand new, and that's terrific. All the people who've gone through it have the same issues that you're gonna have, same questions that you're gonna have. So you just go on there and ask them, hey, who's got a recipe for this? Hey, how did you do this? Your location, what's the traffic? What's the signage? What's the, what kind of shirts do you sell? Ba 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 ba. So it's everything. And if you just keep in mind the simplicity of this business, buy the ingredients, bring them to your location, that'll cost you $1,200 a month. That's the number, $1,200 a month. That's your rent, and that's it. And I can find it in every city in the world in one day, because there's a trick to it. Find, bring it to your location, make the ice cream, Hopefully you'll be smart enough to make this machine first and not waste your money beforehand, but eventually you'll have this machine. Make the ice cream and then bring in customers. And we've got a foolproof way to bring in customers and have them repeat. So it's a simple business. The hardest part of this business is managing your money because you're going to have a lot of it. And that's it. It's a two-day class. Very simple. It's always the Monday and Tuesday before we work here. Now, those of you who are wondering, who are watching this on YouTube, how hard is it to make ice cream? Jeff just said something that really struck me. He said, I'm going to have you making the ice cream. You're going to make it from start to finish. Do you think he would risk this successful business to someone who's never made ice cream before if he didn't trust the fact that this is easy to do? How simple was it making ice cream on your own? You each made ice cream on your own. How simple was it? It's actually silly simple, isn't it? You think it's, it's much harder, much more involved, but it's not. And he's tried. I wouldn't let you. We made rum raisin last night. Would I sell rum raisin in my store that, who made it? Who made the rum raisin? You made it, Connor. Would I sell Connor's rum raisin ice cream in my store if I thought it wasn't 100% of what I make? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. And that's a very popular flavor, rum raisin ice cream. So they've made all the flavors, and I like it. They, they're my little workers for those two days. Uh, I teach them. They make ice cream for me, so I don't have to slave over the machine. All That's night. a deal. It's a deal. It's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? All right, let's break for lunch. Let's break for lunch. That was a great break.